and then these just kind of fell in my lap and I thought well we can put some of these sweet potato plants right there what's up lazy dog fam hope all y'all are having a wonderful day it is Wednesday May 3rd here in South Georgia and on today's video we're going to be filling a small little gap in this plot here behind me got a few sweet potato slips we're going to get in the ground talk a little bit about planting sweet potatoes when you should plant sweet potatoes I'm going to give you an update on some things we planted recently in these two plots back here then we're going to head to the greenhouse and I'm going to show you something I'm doing to try to get a head start on my turmeric this year so about a month or so ago we moved this arch panel trellis from the other side of our barn over here showed you how we set that up and then a few videos after that we planted some giant sunflowers along that trellis also planted some zinnias and marigolds right here on this end of the row got some of those white zinnias blooming already and then we were left with about i don't know 15 20 foot of row space here where we didn't have anything to plant so initially i thought well i'll put some oak tree transplants in that blank space but my oak tree transplants aren't ready in the greenhouse yet still probably another couple weeks ago on those and then these just kind of fell in my lap and i thought well we can put some of these sweet potato plants right there now normally i don't plant sweet potato slips this early i usually wait at least to the end of may early june sometimes the middle of june to put them in the ground because we have such a long warm growing season down here i don't have to be in a big hurry to get them planted but like i said these just kind of fell in my lap i happen to know a guy who's working on a new website for steel plant company which is where these sweet potato slips come from and so he was needing pictures of plants for their new website after he was done taking his pictures i ended up with these so if you've never grown sweet potatoes before this is what you plant to grow your own sweet potatoes it's not like regular potatoes where we put a tuber in the ground and the plant sprouts from that tuber with sweet potatoes you want to plant these things here called slips which are basically plants that are plucked off of a sweet potato now right now at the beginning of may it's probably a little too early for most of the country to be planting sweet potato slips these are heat loving plants you really need to wait till your soil warms up significantly in late spring early summer before planting these things down here in the deep south we can get away with it because it's already warming up pretty significantly here so i've got about 10 or 12 plants here not many but enough to fill that little gap we have there now i've had these sitting in a jar of water for the last week waiting to get some nice root development on the end of those slips there so they'll take off good when we put them in the ground now this variety here is called georgia jet which is one of our favorites we also really like a variety called orleans that we grew last year we're going to plant these georgia jets today and then probably late may early june we'll find another spot in one of our plots with a little more room and plant some orleans sweet potatoes you can find all the varieties that steel has at sweetpotatoplant.com and i'll be sure to put our affiliate link in the description below so you can use that so you can see for this little sliver we have i came in here earlier and kind of mounded up the soil a little bit made me a little ridge or a little hill that makes the sweet potatoes a lot easier to dig later on if you plant them in a nice hill of soft soil there we also have drip tape buried there because it's running alongside that trellis all the way to the front of that plot now i normally don't plant sweet potatoes on drip tape because it's a little aggravating to work around the tape when you're digging the sweet potatoes but i am this time so when talking with the folks at steel plant company they said one of the things that can really negatively affect your end sweet potato harvest is inconsistent watering as those sweet potatoes mature and i'm definitely guilty of that in the past sweet potato plants are pretty drought tolerant and so they won't look like they're thirsty they won't look like they need a lot of water but those guys tell me you really need to be consistent with your watering later on in the life of the plant to get a nice yield so hopefully the drip tape will help us do that give them some consistent water even though it's a little more aggravating to work around the tape come digging time so in my mound that i raked up here i left a little dip in the middle so i could put some pre-plant fertilizer kind of in a line and so i would also know where to put my sweet potato slips i can get them kind of in a straight line as well so we're going to start out by putting some pre-plant fertilizer down here just a little bit of nature safe 855 in that little furrow or dip there 
Now with these plants, you can put them as far apart as you want to, but you don't want to put them closer than a foot apart. So what I did here is just took the plants I have and kind of equally spaced them along this little sliver we have here. They're probably a little bit further than a foot apart. But like I said, that'll be okay. And the rest is easy. We just want to poke these slips down into the soil here, kind of stand them upright like that. Not super complicated. Now, if you've got a bunch of them to plant, you've got a nice, soft, fluffy ridge here. You can use a stick to just kind of poke them down in the soil. That works too. Since I've just got a few plants here, we're just going to plant them by hand. And that's all there is to it there. Now, I did come back with a rake and kind of mound up my hill a little bit more, and I'll probably come out here in a little bit and soak this down pretty good, give it some nice water since it is a little hot and windy out here today. Now when we do our larger sweet potato planting in another month, month and a half, we'll go into much more detail as far as sweet potato planting tips and strategies, things like that. I just wanted to kind of briefly explain what I was doing there as we planted those. And if you haven't purchased any sweet potato slips yet, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that Orleans variety that Steele has. And now that we've got those planted, let's talk about what else we have planted here on the back half of the property in these two plots now out here it may look like we've got a bunch of weeds but that's just old cover crop debris that we've been trying to kill off just a little bit of stubble left i did come in here and wheel hoe this again yesterday which has killed off most of it may have to wheel hoe it one more time to really put the nail in the coffin on that cool season cover crop so we have two rows planted out here now you can see a row there that we watered with the drip tape yesterday and there's a row over there with a big little lake where I need to fix a drip tape leak. Now this is a pretty big plot to only have two rows in it, but in the past I always plant my pumpkins and winter squash too close. I end up with just a jungle of plants. I end up growing too many. So this year we're growing fewer plants and we're giving them more room. So in this first row, and these rows are approximately 40 foot long, we just have two plants. And that's because we're trying to grow some giant butternut squash. And from what I understand, to grow a giant, you need to give the plants plenty of room and plenty of room for yourself to get in there and do a little pruning. So we've just got two plants along this row. I planted these just a few days ago. They haven't overcame their transplant shock quite yet. They should take off pretty soon and I can't wait to see them spread out over all this space that we're giving them and hopefully we get a monster. And then over here about 20 or so feet away from that row we've got some Seminole pumpkins that we planted. Now in the past I usually space these about two foot apart along the row but I want to give them more room this year. I don't need quite that many pumpkins. We should get plenty off this one row so I put the plants about three or four foot apart. And then behind that big plot, in this smaller plot, we have just two, only two, giant pumpkin plants. So just one line of drip tape there and only two plants for this plot that's about 20 foot wide, about 35 foot long. So we've got a plant right there and one down the row a little bit. So last year our biggest giant pumpkin was around 160 pounds or so, but I'm really shooting for something about 500 pounds or more this year. Last year we did employ some of the techniques recommended by our good friend Ryan and some other giant pumpkin growers, but we really had the plants planted too close together and weren't able to get in there and really do what we needed to do. So that's why we're giving these more space. I've heard that the professional giant pumpkin growers will give each plant like a thousand square foot of space. We're not giving each plant that much space, but a lot more space than we gave them last year. So we've got groceries growing on the front half of the property up there around the dream garden. And then back here, we're gonna have a little fun and see just how big a pumpkin we can grow. And then real quick, back to this bigger plot where we have the Seminole pumpkins and the giant butternut planted. We've got some partially shaded garden real estate right over here. And this is where we're hopefully gonna be planting a lot of turmeric. So last year I learned that it doesn't matter when you put turmeric in the ground down here, it's not going to sprout and start having plants coming out of the ground until midsummer when the soil gets really, really warm. Something about that warm summer soil triggers emergence. But this year we're trying something different to get a little bit of a head start. 
So this year we're going to try pre-sprouting our turmeric. This is something I saw on a market farming Facebook group I'm in. And that guy said it works pretty well. So basically what we did was we took these trays here, which don't have holes in the bottom, put some pro mix in them, took our turmeric harvest from last year out the fridge, broke it up into little pieces, and kind of pushed it down in the soil. I've never done this before, but this is how I saw it being done and it looked like it worked pretty well so we're giving it a try i'm also testing a little bit here how small a piece we can get away with planting that's why you see some pieces a little bigger with several fingers on them and then we just got some little bitty nubs in there as well so we've got these on a heat mat trying to simulate some warmer soil temps trying to encourage some early sprouting and if this works this should lengthen our turmeric growing season and hopefully result in some bigger harvest now while we're in the greenhouse, one more thing I want to talk about are these dwarf cowhorn okri seeds that we have listed on our website at lazydogfarm.com that a lot of you have purchased already. Now these are good seeds and they germinate pretty well. You can see we're starting to fill out this tray here, but they take a long time to germinate. They have a harder capsule on them than traditional okri seeds and so the germination time is a good bit longer. So about a week or so after planting these, I hadn't seen anything popping through the perlite there. I started to get a little bit worried. So I dug around there, scratched out a few of the seeds, took a look at them. They weren't rotten. They were still good, perfectly fine. That capsule just hadn't broken open yet. So if you got some of these seeds from us or are planning to get some of these seeds from us, just know that you got to be very, very patient with these. I had some just popping through yesterday, a couple weeks after planting them. Now, if you've ever soaked seeds before, soak them in water before you plant them in a tray or whatever, you might want to try that with some of these seeds. I wouldn't recommend direct seeding them in the ground because they take a while to germinate and your weeds might get the best of you before they germinate. So I would definitely recommend starting them in trays or soaking the seeds, trying to get that capsule broken down a little bit so they'll germinate a little faster for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below, including Steel Plant Company, where you can get some sweet potato slips. And if you want to see some of those Orlean sweet potatoes that I was talking about that we harvested last year, check out this video right here. You can see us harvest all the varieties we grew last year and see just how much that Orleans variety outperformed the others. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.